I'm Philip Lewis, uh, Camden Unison Branch Health and Safety Officer. Uh, during the next week we will be uh, having a European Health and Safety Week. Safety for all ages. Uh, but also during this month we should be celebrating the 40th anniversary of the Safety Representative Safety Committee Regulations 1977. They were brought in by Michael Foote, who was the Employment Minister at the time. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending how you look at it, I remember that only too well, because when I first became a shop steward uh, in the rail industry, we did not have initially have safety reps, because uh, it wasn't a part of the 1974 Act. But some of us worked as safety reps and we took safety issues up as a part of the negotiating body. With this um, regulation, it gave those of us who were keen to have a strong health and safety ethos within the organizations we worked in, uh, the opportunity to raise the issues of concern like asbestos in the workplace, like uh, poor lighting, uh, slip, trips and falls, the number of accidents, and regrettably at that time a very high number of fatalities in the workplace, particularly the construction industry. But I worked in the rail industry and for whatever its faults, uh, British Rail had a pretty effective safety record. I think it was more to do with uh, uh, relation to public relations rather than uh, safe workforce because there were still issues that needed to be addressed in relation to the workforce. And that was the issue of asbestos. That was a real dog uh, to fight and we, we, we won in the end. But uh, I remember the first training course that the TUC had done on the Brown Book, as it became to be known, and the course I was in um, East Ham College, a five-day spread over five weeks training, and you got a separate Brown Book for each day of the course, and thank heavens they've actually reduced it down to a more thinner version than what I had uh, when I first did the training because you had to have a great big binder to put it all in. But the course itself was very good. It was helped to explain the, the committee regulations in, in, in considerable detail and the law around it. And that's very important. And one thing I would love to see that the anniversary of this piece of legislation that there is some sort of reps conference across the UK celebrating the Brown Book and giving people, particularly encouraging young people to become safety reps to come to such an event to be able to understand what this really meant because it was a very serious door opener to a lot of further legislation down the line, the European six pack risk assessments, COSH there was a number of areas of work that had to be dealt with and had to be fought for individually in a lot of cases. The Working Time Directive, the Conservative governments in the 80s fought that tooth and nail. They really didn't like that and that's one of the concerns going forward if the Brit exit uh, disaster happens particularly the way the Tories want to do it, uh, our safety legislation could be in jeopardy. But all I'm going to say to people is think about it a bit. Yes, we may use the European Six Pack, but use the 1974 Act, Section 2 of that Act, it's very clear. Employers have a duty of responsibility for the safety, as far as reasonably practical. They may abolish risk assessment, but you can't, like a nuclear weapon, you can't uninvent it. And the nuclear weapon on the health and safety is the risk assessment. And that 
no court in the land would turn around and say that they've done the proper job without doing a risk assessment, quite honest, because it's blatantly obvious. That's why even some employers are saying keep the risk assessment because they understand the value of it. So anyway, I hope people do remember the, uh, in some way, the uh, Health and Safety Representative and Safety Committee regulations uh, anniversaries over the month over this month and I hope down the line that the TUC and others will do something to commemorate it as a brilliant piece of regulation and the people who fought for health and safety using this and still getting victimized by the way some of them still being victimized blacklisting all that can of worms still goes on I've got here where I work a safety rep who has been suspended from work uh, because I believe he was because of his health and safety work and because of his trade union activities. I don't give a bugger what they say. It's blatantly obvious to me. So um, I'm just putting this out there. I'd like to hear comments, of course. Uh, thanks for listening.